Hey everybody, I'm back. Uh, it's up Logic Ninja, or you can call me David Earl. I really don't care. Um, great to be back. Uh, sorry I've been away. What can I say? Was really busy. Quick shout out to Anthony Larson. Thank you for lunch. Uh, it was really awesome seeing you at Macworld, and thanks for showing me the MacBook Air, and thank you for a very inspiring talk. That was very cool, and I really appreciate it. Anyway, on to the lesson. Today we're going to talk about side chaining by popular demand. So anyway, on we go. Take care. All right, so side chaining. Um, according to what I talked about with compression, we were talking about, I, I make an analogy where compression is kind of like your mom sitting in the seat next to you, uh, reaching for your volume knob every time the music got loud. Well, with side chaining, essentially what's happening is it's like your mom is listening to an iPod and she reaches for the volume on your stereo when she hears something get loud on her iPod. Okay, here's how that works. So I'm going to take a bass. This is very, very, very popular in stuff like trance and side trance and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to use compression uh, to do what's called ducking on a bass. Uh, every time the kick hits, it's going to compress uh, our bass. So the first thing I do is I get a bass. I'm going to use a very simple bass, the ESM. And in the ESM, I'm going to turn its decay all the way up. I'm going to add a little bit of overdrive, and I end up with a bass that sounds kind of like this. Okay, it just drones on and on. That's fine. It's a little loud right now. I might turn that down a bit. There we go. That's good. Now I'm going to record just the bass just playing one long continuous note. Okay, now, you guys also heard a kick going at the same time. Well, I've got an ultra beat set up, and it's playing kicks on uh, every quarter note. So now what I have is I have a bass that's droning along, and then I have a kick that's just hitting on quarter notes with it, right? So let's see. <laughs> Guess I must have been a little off when I hit that note. There we go. Now, on the ES1, or the ESM, excuse me, I put a compressor on there. The compressor has the ability to listen. Okay, you remember how I was talking about compression? It's like your mom, all of a sudden she's not listening to your music, she's listening to her iPod, and she's reaching for the volume whenever she hears that. Well, the equivalent of the iPod is this sidechain bus. We're going to tell this compressor to be listening to another source, not the audio that we have here, which is the bass, but to another source, which is going to be the kick. So... On my side chain here, I'm going to choose, okay, well, we have all of our inputs here, right? Input 1 through 22. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the kick here, and on its send, I'm going to assign it to bus 1. Okay? So I'm going to go back to the ESM, and hopefully in this compressor, not only do I get my audio inputs, but I also get bus 1 down here. So right now, this compressor is listening to bus 1. Back on the kick here, I'm going to send some of this kick to that compressor by doing this. Now, unfortunately, that's also sending the sound to this bus, okay? Uh, this auxiliary, excuse me, this auxiliary. So on this auxiliary, I'm going to take the input and say no input, okay? So aux1 is no longer listening to bus1, but this compressor is. So the signal flow is the kick, some of the kick is going to go through this bus, bus 1, and it's going to end up at this compressor, side chaining to this compressor, which is on the bass. Watch what happens. Eh, that's not too exciting, is it? Okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is turn down the bass a bit. Turn the kick down a little bit. Now watch what happens. I'm going to go into the compressor that's on the bass. I'm going to turn the compressor the compressor threshold down. I'm going to turn the attack down. 
the release down and watch this you hear that all the time in trance music Just adjusting my attack and my release so that the bass really sounds like it's going wah 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 wah. Okay. That's pretty good. I'll try a couple of the different algorithms here. That's not too good. That's not too good. How's that? Nah. That's nice and dirty. The opto's too slow. So the platinum gives us our best algorithm for the, uh, our best circuit for our compressor here. So what I did, I took my compressor, side chained it to bus one. Um, I have the kick sending some of its sound to bus one and in effect, what that does is the kick is still happening. This kick is still coming out of the ultra beat, but some of it's getting sent to the compressor, which is assigned to the bass, and the compressor pushes down on the sound whenever it hears a kick. So there's one example of side chaining. Now, I don't have enough time here to go into the other thing I was going to do, so I am going to post another video. Yippee. See you in a second. So there you go. Uh, another quick shout out, uh, or not really a shout out, but sort of a criticism. I was reading Sound on Sound magazine, and uh, this guy named uh, this group called Younger Brother um, was talking about how um, it takes 30 clicks in Logic to get an audio file back, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what, guys? There's this thing called freezing. Have you heard of it? You might want to check it out. It's actually a really cool function, and uh, it's one click. Anyway, uh, I couldn't let that go. So uh, maybe maybe there's something I'm missing there. Uh, if you're watching this, feel free to um, give me a critique and uh, give me a little response there. That would be fine. Anyway, uh, take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Take care.